Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, this video I'm going to talk about the basics of conditional statements. Uh, now first of all, this is the first of several videos I'm going to have over conditional statements. You can watch them on my website if you want to. Uh, but this one right here is about conditional statements and what in the world are conditional statements. Well, it's a statement written in the if-then form. Uh, now every conditional statement is going to have the word if and then in there. If it doesn't have one of these words in there, then you can't consider it a conditional statement. Uh, now this is something that you might be familiar with in science class. And uh, let's jump down here to, to let me explain this in more detail. There are characteristics of conditional statements. The if statement is the hypothesis. The then statement is the conclusion. Uh, and so this is where I'm, I'm remembering science class about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I know whenever we did labs, we had to come up with a hypothesis and then a conclusion to that hypothesis. And so this shouldn't be brand new to you, I hope. Uh, now, anyways, so we have two statements in conditional statements. The first one is the hypothesis. The second statement is the conclusion. And it's often written as if P then Q or if P then Q. So notice this arrow represents the word then. So these kind of go together. Uh, that's just kind of an abbreviated form. But what do mean, they mean by the P and the Q? Well, let me change colors here. The P is represented whatever is representing whatever you put in for the hypothesis. Uh, and so they're just saying this is a blank statement for every single conditional statement. So whatever the hypothesis is, is going to be uh, the P in this case. And whatever the Q is, is going to be the conclusion. And I'm going to go over in more detail. We've got three example problems I'm going to do. I'll go over this in more detail. But for right now, I need you to know that the if statement is a hypothesis and the then statement is a conclusion. And then we'll jump back into this one here at the very end. And so anyways, let's look at the first example here. It says, if you are a high school student, then you walk to school. Uh, and so is this a conditional statement? Does it have the word if and then then in there with statements after each one of those words? Yes, it does. So if and then then, so this is a conditional statement. And then the first statement here is the hypothesis. I'll represent it as just HYP. And the second statement is after the word then is the conclusion. So I'm just going to write conclude for conclusion. And so notice the hypothesis does not include the word if. And the conclusion does not include the word then. The hypothesis is the word after if up to the comma. The conclusion is after the word then up until you're done with the sentence. And so this is just something to keep in mind. Uh, but we'll jump back to here in a moment. Uh, so what right now, I'm just practicing on identifying the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let's do two more problems here. It says, uh, example two, if you have a dog, then its name is Spot. Well, is this a conditional statement? Does it have if and then in there? Yes, so we got that cleared. What is the hypothesis? From what word to what word is the hypothesis? From you to dog. So you have a dog is the hypothesis. And so what's the conclusion? Yeah, well, it goes from its name, sorry, it goes from its to Spot, and the conclusion is its name is Spot. This is the conclusion. And so uh, we'll jump from example two to three now. I'm going to come back to this guy here in a moment. Uh, but now we're making it mathematical. Oh, no. Uh, let's see here. If 2x equals 6, then x equals 3. Uh, what's the hypothesis? It's 2x equals 6. And then what's the conclusion? It's x equals 3. And so um, these are three examples of conditional statements, and I've identified the hypothesis and the conclusion. But I want to talk about the if P then Q part. And so let's talk about the if P then Q, because this is going to be very helpful whenever we get to this video right here uh, over converse, inverse, and contrapositives. Uh, and so let's see here. If you are a high, high school student, then you walk to school. Well, if, and then this whole statement for the hypothesis is going to be the P, and then then, and then we have the Q. So again, the hypothesis is going to be the P, and the conclusion is going to be the Q here. And so this is the if P, then Q. Uh, now we're jumping over here. So we would have the if, this all here is the P, and then we have then, and then we would have this is the Q. And so if we look at this example versus this example, the hypothesis is, again, representing what P is. But the hypothesis is different in these two problems here. And so, again, the P is just representing whatever you have as a hypothesis, and the Q is representing whatever it is you have for the conclusion. And so let's finish this guy up here. It says if, again, the hypothesis is the P, and then we have the, the then, and then we have the Q here. 
And again, this is going to be useful when we get to another video. So again, P represents whatever the hypothesis is. The Q represents whatever the conclusion is. And that finishes up my video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.